Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV, well not at Halo RV, from Halo RV. We're actually down here at the Rockwood Flagstaff Folding Camper Production Plant. We're going to get to take a quick walk, uh, walk through the production line and get to see these things come together. Now a couple interesting notes on this. First of all, this is segment four out of four of Rockwood Plant Tours that we've recorded. If you haven't seen the other ones, I'll leave you some links in the video description. Make sure you check those out. You'll get to see how the, you know, their travel trailers, their fifth wheels, the Geo Pros all come together. Those are, uh, to me, every, every one of those has some interesting information that I learned that even I didn't know about. And I've been through Rockwood and Flagstaff uh, construction before. Now you've heard me say Rockwood and Flagstaff back and forth a couple times. If you were not aware, I touched on it in the other videos, but they are literally one in the same. The only difference on these is going to just be basically different color decals, like orange versus green. But they're, they're literally the exact same trailer. They built the same models. They just might have a little bit different model number. For simplicity's sake and from the fact that I'm used to saying Rockwood as a Rockwood dealer, I'll probably just say Rockwood moving forward, but anything I refer to in this video will apply equally to both brands. Now you might actually see some fellows walking around in the background here. Some of these lights are motion sensitive. They allowed me to come down after hours and uh, there's main breaker lights for everything or breakers for all the lights. And then so, some of the stuff just needs to be lit up as you're walking around. So take a quick second, say, Thank you, Rockwood, for putting in the extra effort to allow us to get this footage for you today. Thank you, Mr. Halo, for allowing me to come down and, and get off work. Um, you know, uh, it was either this or I go play Pokemon Go, so I figured I'd go to Rockwood because it sounded way cooler. Anyway, <laughs> one of the interesting things I think about when I when I go through this, like the, the pop-up market, it's maybe not the flashiest, fanciest. It doesn't get the most attention. I don't expect this video to get the most views out of an area of our factory tours. In fact, I probably expect it to get a few uh, less. But there's a big aspect of Rockwood's presence in the pop-up market that I want to hit on first and foremost, because what a lot of people don't realize is that they have succeeded where so many other manufacturers have pulled out of this market. They are one of a very small number of manufacturers who seriously produces pop-ups or fold downs or folding campers. They're called different things regionally, kind of like pop, soda, and Coke are called different things regionally through the country, you know. Um, Rockwood uh, is and has been the largest volume producer, not just of laminated ultralight travel trailers and fifth wheels, but also of folding campers. I think that's pretty amazing. Rockwood is the top volume producer and has been for many consecutive years in multiple categories. And that's what I always say about Rockwood doing Rockwood things. Whatever they decide to do, they're pretty much gonna do it about the best there is. So as always, we're gonna start right from the raw chassis and this will probably be a little bit quicker tour than some of the other ones we've seen. Uh, anything that would be kind of a similar process, uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about, but if you're looking, that chassis is actually upside down because what they have here is the Chassinator Flipperator 9000 series, revision number 37, I believe the patent office has that. It, it will actually grab onto these things and uh, flip them upside down to get on the work table over here where you start seeing things like the axles go on, the uh, stabilizer jacks, they start running. Some of your undercarriage things like some of the initial wiring and um, uh, propane lines all start going into place. Like you'll see the, the wiring that runs up to the, uh, the tongue jack area here. So after the chassis flipperator flips it back uh, over onto the tires here, this is the floor. Now this floor that we're looking at is actually upside down. It is an OSB structure wood floor. It's one of the only times in Rockwood uh, construction that you will see that used. Um, if you notice too, the bottom of this, they hit it very heavily with a, uh, an anti-wicking sealing treatment. In case you're kind of curious, that is literally the exact same stuff that they use to seal asphalt. They put a nice thick heavy coating on that. They bring it over here onto the chassis where you also see the lifter system getting put in place. This is a very traditional Goshen stamping lifter system. It is time tested, it's proven, it's lightweight, it's cost effective, and it just keeps working. And I don't know that you're gonna specifically glean very much for this, but you know, we got a chance to get right up and close here in the factory. We might as well get right up and close here and allow you to see everything that's going on under the skin. Specifically things like these are your, uh, your, your propane plumbing lines, like all your little fixtures there. I don't know that it's necessarily, you're going to learn much by looking at it, but it's not something you normally get to see. So why not? Now on top of that, uh, floor decking that we saw, they completely glue the entire flooring down. That's, that's again, one of those little steps they probably don't have to do, but that's something Rockwood always does. And they do this the same way they do, say, like on the roofing, on their other models that you saw in our previous tours. They have a guy with what looks like a giant paintbrush roller. It gets put away at the end of the day, so we're not looking at it right now. And 
from edge to edge, front to back, side to side. They go through and put adhesive down under every square inch of this flooring. Then somebody comes through with this miniature handheld like Flintstone steamroller kind of thing right here. And they work from the middle out to get all the air bubbles out. And just like you're seeing right here, I'm moving around so you can see the light go across it. You don't find bubbly screwed up flooring in Rockwood uh, pop-up campers. Now these come together pretty darn quickly. Uh, like you see the, the walls and everything coming into play here. Well, that is all done over here in a woodworking shop by uh, individual specialists effectively. So those walls, they're not just like putting them together by hand on the production line. Every one of these things, every wall, every front wall, rear wall, etc., has its own specific little jig so that everything kind of goes into place the right way there, uh, every time. And then you have a one piece assembly that just goes out and gets affixed onto the chassis and floor structure. And right about the same time, just across the street, uh, I'll give you two guesses as to what they're doing over there at that big wall of wires. Pro tip, they're doing the same thing. They're pre-wiring as many things as they can so that it's basically just a simple drop-in assembly once it gets to the production line. Now, when I told the boss today I wanted to leave work to go play Pokemon Go, he said, uh, no, absolutely not, which of course he did. That was the joke. That was the setup so that I could tell him I wanted to go record a plant tour of a pop-up folding camper plant. Because a lot of people would say, you know, it's, it's, it's a smaller market. There's not as many people. Do you really need to spend your time on that? And yes, I did. I didn't. Rockwood does all of the things. I wanted to come down here and basically show all of the things. And specifically, I think that there's more going on under uh, the skin construction of these than a lot of people realize. And I can show you a lot of that right here that at the store, I just can't do that. For instance, like you just look at it, you're like, okay, it's a wood outline. It is a, a lot of stable construction. You do see screwed fasteners as well. The staples are just there as a secondary fastener. But when you look a little bit closer, you notice how we're not looking at like old scrap wood. You're not looking at uh, like a lot of structure wood in the sidewalls over here. You're looking at like normal studs you're, where your wheel wells get affixed. That, oh my Lord, that is like an inch and a half micro laminated. Beam. This is, okay, so guys, a giant super slide over, say like at a Jayco J flight, that is what they use as a header beam above that. They're using it just as a fender flare anchor on here. Uh, I don't want to say something's overbuilt, but that's kind of overbuilt. Oh my gosh. You notice how everything else is plywood? You know, uh, <laughs> there's, they're not building these things out of sawdust and beaver puke. <laughs> Additionally, where there is going to be a gap where you need one, like for this lifter system arm right here, they add an extra hurricane band just to help keep everything lashed together. Now we saw where all the links of wiring are pre-measured, pre-bundled, uh, you know, as many connectors as can be pre-assembled uh, are, are done as possible. And then once again, where you have things like furniture fixtures and whatnot, all that stuff is uh, done in a separate shop that is over here in stage. So the people on the production line, really the biggest thing that they're doing is they're effectively just kind of dropping everything in place and then anchoring it down. And it's kind of funny how we go from this empty box to you put in just a couple fixtures like that is our folding uh, kitchen sink right there that folds down. And suddenly this thing really starts taking shape very quickly. And while that's happening inside, you can see that out here, they're beginning to do some things like apply the skins to the front, the side walls, the rear wall. They're adding on things like that uh, spare tire mount on the back. All of our clearance lights and marker lights and brake lights and all that stuff, those things are starting to get put into place because again, it's all been basically pre-wired and assembled. You can see how, how the, look at the consistency of this from the production line. You see how everything is exactly the same all the way down. They're not manually running looms of wire and chopping stuff out and throwing crap around. Like Notice there's not a whole bunch of scrap and wiring and a whole bunch of junk on the floor. Everything has its own little place right here. Another cool little thing is that every exterior light on these things, they are all LED. Neat little detail on LED lights. Easy way to say it, they are digital instead of analog. They're either basically off or on. They snap on faster than incandescent bulbs. Incandescent bulbs have a little bit of a, a spark up time. So they don't go from off to on like uh, an LED light. They go from off to on. Now it is pretty quick, admittedly, but that's when we're just standing here, when we're not moving. Think about this thing going down the road. When those brake lights, when things like that really matter, an LED taillight ignites five milliseconds faster. And when you're going 60 miles an hour, and I'm willing to bet a bunch of you go more than 60 when you're going down the road. I know I was going more than 60 to get down here. I was trying to beat the GPS. What is it about that, by the way? Whenever you see a time on a GPS, is it, is it 
men and women, or is it just men? We're like, is that a challenge? I could beat that, you know? You try to turn into Dom from Fast and Furious. You're hitting the nitrous on your Kia Soul. There's no nitrous on my Kia Soul. But what I'm getting at is when they fire up five milliseconds faster, sorry, I go on tangents. Um, when they fire up a little bit faster at 60 miles an hour or faster on the highway, that gives the person behind you five extra feet of stopping time because of how much more quickly it registers versus how much that time translates into braking distance. Five feet doesn't sound like a lot, but I think something chances are, I know I have, every one of us has done, is come up to a stoplight. Everybody okay? All right. Okay, well, the ghost of Christmas past has visited us over here at Rockwood today. I'm sure when we come around the corner, we'll see what that was. I'm not going to lie, kind of scared the living crap out of me. It is sort of spooky being in these places after hours. You feel like the ghost of Old Man Forest River is coming to get you. Back to the point. This is taking a lot longer than I meant. Um, five feet of stopping time. Have you ever been messing with your radio and looked up at a stoplight and went, Aah! and you had to jam on your brakes and you came this close to the guy in front of you? That's two inches. This can be five feet of safety. So that's my guide there in the distance going through, trying to figure out uh, to make sure there's not a worker like under a pallet, but as far as I know, we're the only ones here because they turn the lights on for us. But you see now, um, as the furniture and fixtures start going into place, some of the appliances start coming in and quality control begins right here. One of the things that they're doing is right away, they start doing pressure testing on things like your water lines, your gas lines. Just because this is a pop-up, uh, they, they don't start cutting corners they don't start doing fewer things so if you saw parts one through three you know that every single rockwood trailer they make is uh water tested electrical tested propane tested every single time before it gets off the production line and then some units are going gone through one or two additional layers of total blind screening either in-house or by an independent third party but they do the same things here on a pop-up that they do on a luxury fifth wheel that a lot of full-timers would like to enjoy. That's one of the things I think is so cool about this. And just something that really strikes me here is just the cleanliness of the workstations here. You know, and I've been through multiple different plant tours and it doesn't necessarily offend me if there's some scrap and some particulate on the floor as they're working. I get that it's a production facility, but there's like none of that here. Like everything is very clean, very focused, very a lot of purpose and intent goes into all of this. Which, if you didn't know, that's a neat thing about camping. It's intense! <laughs> now, these are, in a sense, kind of clamshell campers. I'm kind of thinking clamshell because I'm kind of thinking, like, takeout food because I skipped lunch to come down here today, which, if you see my dad vibe, you know that was a very significant uh, sacrifice that I made. <laughs> but we're actually over in the roof shop right now. And if you take a look at this, um, they're, uh, they're even here, they're running LED lighting. Everything is all jigged out. Everything is pre-assembled in its individual components as much as possible so that assembly is always very simple. And when they flip it back over, suddenly, you know, it really starts to take shape. One of the things I like about this, you can, I mean, you can see it, you can feel it, you can hear it. This is an, a seamless one piece metallic roof skin right here. Now you do still have seams down the side. You're gonna wanna make sure that you maintain those, but it, it is just, it's super strong, long-term uh, lasting, and their roofing is basically all built to handle about 150 pounds. Now I'm a little bit bigger than that. I would probably still not myself not worry about getting on a Rockwood roof as long as I was dispersing my weight. I cannot obviously recommend that for you. But um, if I needed to get up there, if I needed to do some seal work, but that's the thing that's about a pop-up camper that's so easy. You don't need to get on the roof of them to do work like you do a lot of conventional campers because when they're folded down, they're already at like head level, chest level. Maybe you get like a little step stool that you put beside it, but maintaining these is easy and another thing people don't think about with tent campers because they are so small when they fold down uh you can a lot of times like you can hide them under say a lean-to under a garage you can easily stuff them into a corner of a barn there's something that are easier to keep out of the weather versus a larger travel trailer or fifth wheel so that's yet another layer of maintenance reduction that can kind of factor into these things a couple other cool things on the roofing they're uh they're all built with the structure to handle the weight 
of an air conditioner. When you see the AC prep kit on like a Rockwood as an option, say like the 1940s that we sell a lot of over at Halet RV, that's just one example. It's basically just a little wiring kit. The roof structure is always there. That is a major difference on Rockwood pop-ups versus, well, there, again, there's not even a lot of other brands even producing pop-up campers anymore. Uh, there were a lot of brands that if you didn't order it with AC prep, they actually built the roof not as strong, but Rockwood structurally builds everything the same way. They just give you the ability to add an air conditioner onto it, and you can actually do that right from the factory level, just like you're seeing there in the distance in that uh, the roof. So this is you see this this hoist system. This is a longer segment, and I'm jumping all over the place. I get it. So they got this big octopus hoist system. It grabs onto it, clamps it up, brings it over in place. They crank the lifter system up, get it all hooked up right here. It's just it's really cool to me getting to see it kind of all come together. But the roofing is done. The wiring, the lights, all they have to do is basically get married down into the body of the camper because all of the um say uh fixtures and everything up here they are already put in place now a couple stations down you see what we call the tent or the canvas starts coming into place it's not actually either of those things it's a material called duratec tent is you know like tents that we grew up in or tent camping and canvas is stuff that a lot of pop-ups used to use the trick with that stuff it was fine but like you'll you'll hear old people that came out wrong that sounded rude we'll say veteran rvers people who have been camping a long time not specifically just old people you get what i mean they would say if it's raining that's fine but don't touch the canvas because if you did the water would start wicking in and you would actually basically create a leak in your rv just by touching it this stuff you don't have to do that it's actually a five layer composite like vinyl fabric sort of material it itself has a five-year uh guarantee from the manufacturer one of the other things that's really cool about this and rockwood does the same thing on their rockwood rue hybrid so if you watch the mini light video and then you combine it with what i'm telling you here on this that's basically what a rockwood rue is this stuff is sectionalized so let's say neighbor johnny didn't watch his kid or uh, just not even that let's just say that the weather kicked up a freak storm and a tree branch stabbed your thing while you were camping. Obviously you can patch it, but you're like, I don't, I don't want to patch. I don't want to, I don't want, you know, to look like that. I want it to look right. Individual sections of this can be replaced. So you can get them faster. Uh, they cost less. Uh, they're easier to put on. And it's a better material from the start. So from start to finish inside and out, and even after the fact, if you need service work, this is the best material that's out there for this kind of camper. Now, right after that happens, then the bed ends like the actual say slide out decking comes in place you, uh once again it's all pre-assembled by specific trained folks so it's not being like kind of just figured out on the fly as they go down the production line they know what they're building they know what size it needs to be everything is pre-staged and then it just gets attached to uh, effectively uh you know the fixed body construction of this now it is always amazing to me you look at this and you're thinking okay so it's just plywood just sticking out over thin air as far as i've ever seen the lowest weight rating i've ever found on any rock would say pop out bed end is at least 800 pounds going up to a, a little bit over a thousand pounds on some of their hybrids and there's those motion activated lights let's go see if i can flap my arms like crazy and get them turned on <laughs> Now, if you notice in the distance there, you see just this giant mountain of cushions. If you've seen the other three segments uh, that we've put together out of the various Rockwood plants, once again, you see the same processes come through here. Even though it's a little pop-up, they still use the same processes that they use on a beautiful fifth wheel. And that is things like our furniture and our soft goods. Those are the last things to go into the camper so that uh, while people are working around the inside, doing lights, doing little fixtures, doing quality control, because there's little fit and finish things that are happening the entire way down the production line, this stuff that could get stained, scarred, snagged, it's over here, chilling, just waiting to get put in and not getting all dinged up and scratched up so that when you take your Rockwood camper home and you open it up the first time, you don't see where somebody sat down with a screwdriver in their back pocket or spilled some antifreeze on something or put their greasy construction hands on it. And that's not a criticism of somebody who works in these things. It's a, it's a factory environment. You're gonna get some dirt on your hands. And I think we understand that, but I think we all agree we don't want it on our furniture. And like I said, this is probably not gonna be our longest of these factory tours. This is a little smaller camper, so it comes together a little more quickly. But what I wanted to show on this, a couple things, I wanted to share the story that again, Rockwood is not just an amazing ultralight builder. Historically, you could argue the best 
simply by historical sales volume and popularity and continued popularity today, but also the most uh, popular folding trailer builder out there. And again, whether you call them pop-ups or fold downs or whatever you want to call them, that's what these things are. Um, it's very cool to me to get to see that the processes that they employ on the big stuff, it trickles all the way down through here. Now, each product that we've seen of all four of these segments, they all have their little tweaks because each one of those products is a little bit specialized to their own specific market. But the consistency, the, the focus on pre-staging, uh, uh, effective construction, active quality control, and then again, potentially double, triple blind uh, screening after this, all the stuff that they do on these is not all of it is stuff that they have to do, but that is why, especially in say pop-up campers, they have outlasted nearly everybody else out there. There is almost no other major player in the folding camping market today. Rockwood builds more models. They build more of them than anybody else in this. Now, it, it actually, I had to come down here two different days. I had, I came down here for parts one and two. I wasn't able to record everything I wanted to because I really wanted to take all the time to get through these. I came down today to get parts three and four. So I've taken two trips away from the dealership. Rockwood's made two special exemptions to let us through here. And I just, I, I, I'd appreciate it just in acknowledgement of that alone. If you haven't, like if you found this video useful, if you learned something, hit the like button, leave us some comments, whether you have questions, whether it's thanks, whether you have a concern, anything like that, let us know. And then again, if you haven't done so, if you appreciate seeing this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button and leave me a little comment letting me know, is there another factory tour that I could get you from Halo RV? Understand, I'm probably not going to go through a factory that we don't carry at our dealership. But if there's one that we haven't gotten yet, I will let you know. And actually, I'll leave you some more links in the video description of all the other different facilities that we have been able to get through. And when you're ready, we would love the chance to work with you at our family owned and operated facility. Folks, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We only do everything else. Sorry for the convenience. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Hello. Yep. Yep, just got done recording a bunch of them pop up campers down there at the Rockwood Way. Yes, sir. Nope, gonna stop off and get me a salad. Yep. One of them chicken nugget flavored salads. <laughs>